Cassius. Jedi Redeemed. Chapter 14. Cassius kept his hands up, feeling the barrel of a blaster to the back of his head as his eyes glanced down to Pip, his arms up as well. Cassius felt his saber as it was plucked from his belt. This way, Jedi. No sudden moves or I'll finish what the Empire couldn't. Cassius was roughly grabbed by the shoulder. His face kept pointed away from his assailant as he was led around the houses and towards a dark hole leading to a stairwell. As they moved down the steps, going deeper underground, Cassius could hear distant mumbles, and soon, he was brought to a wide open area full of tents, stands, and small shacks. It was an underground town, lit with floating lamps and droids that buzzed overhead carrying bright lights. On top of a few buildings, men with blaster rifles keeping watch. Keep moving. Cassius felt the blaster press into his back again as he kept moving. Make a left, through the doors. Cassius and Pip kept their hands up as they were forced through a metal door into one of the shacks. Turn around, slowly. They both slowly turned and faced their captor. A man with a dark red helmet and brown armor, aiming a blaster at them. What is your business on Terrace? Our business doesn't concern you. We're not here to cause trouble with Rotafall. That's funny. Well, you have trouble. You're in our territory, Jedi. The last thing we need is more eyes on us. And after that little scuffle back there, it's going to be all the more difficult for us to carry out our business. Now I'll ask you again, and you better give me a straight answer. What are you doing on Terrace? Cassius looked at Pip and back to the man. We were told that we could find recruits for the rebellion here. A friend of mine left a list before he died of possible contacts here on Terrace who might be willing to join. Your friend was mistaken. No one on Terrace is stupid enough to fight back. Those who are are drunken idiots who spend their lives drowning their depression. My friend was many things. But I trusted his judgment. I've got to find these contacts and regroup with my team. I'm going to guess you took them too. The blonde one and the grand? Yeah, they're here. Take me to them. The man chuckled and aimed his blaster at Cassie's head. Yeah? Why? Because I'd prefer not to kill you. The man felt something press against his stomach as he looked down, seeing that Cassius had swiped his lightsaber back without him noticing. You think you can kill me before I put a hole in your skull? I don't think you want to test that. Neither moved for a moment before the man lowered his blaster. Cassius slowly clipped his saber back to his belt. I'm not here to cause you trouble. But Rondo's list said there were people here ready to fight back. The man looked from Cassius to the door. Follow me. I'll take you to Kef. Who's Kef? The head of Rota Fall. It'll be up to him to decide what we do with you. Cassius nodded. What about you? What's your name? The man holstered his pistol and looked to Cassius. Vec. Cassius looked down to Pip. Never a dull moment, eh, Captain? Nope. Come on. Cassius followed Vec as they walked through the dimly lit alleys between the shacks and tents. Who lives down here? Lots of people. Families, mostly. Wanted for one reason or another. We keep them safe from Imperial eyes. Cassius looked as a young girl walked to her mother carrying a doll under her arm. I thought you guys were a crime syndicate. Oh, we are. What we do is very illegal under the Empire. We used to run bigger operations. Swiping speeders, moving a bit of spice here and there, weapons trading. That all changed when the Empire came to Terrace. We still keep up our reputation. Rota Fall's name still carries weight in this sector. But you could say our priorities have shifted a bit. Vec led Cassius and Pip through a dark alleyway, and up a path leading to a domed building. Look, not that this place isn't... charming. But where's our friend? And the pile of crate spit he was with. Your companions are here. Kef will decide whether or not you guys are trouble. Making their way to a rusted set of metal doors, they pushed through into a large room with a heavy stone table at the center. Sitting at the far end, a Gungan wearing similar attire to Vec. Kef, the Jedi and his droid. A Gungan? Cool. You know, I've been to Naboo before. Do you, sir, miss your home planet? Kef stooped down and glared at the droid. I'm gonna give you three seconds to switch off your talk box, droid. 
Pip backed up behind Cassius and nodded, pressing a switch on his neck. Kef stood and looked at Cassius. Jedi, you are bold to come to Terrace. I'm looking for people. The last thing I want is to get involved with Rotafall. Believe me, the feeling is mutual. We already have the imps breathing down our necks at every turn. You bring trouble that we cannot afford. Then let us go and we'll be out of your hair after we find who we're looking for. And who would you be looking for, Jedi? Your kind are all but gone. Who could be so important that you would risk exposure? It's not so much who, it's why. The Rebellion needs all the help it can get. A friend of mine left us a list of potential recruits before he died. I'm going to see to it that we find them. Kef scoffed. Any potential recruits you'd find on Terrace are drunks or lunatics. Maybe. But if Rondo believed they were worth recruiting... Hold on, hold on. Rondo. The Rodian. Cassius stepped closer. You knew him? Knew him? He was my mortal enemy for years. Of course I knew that bloated fool. Watch what you say about him around me. All right. He was your friend. Tell me, friend of Rondo, did he tell you about how he and his men once pillaged a town on Seacom 4 just to steal their idol? How about the reason he was wanted by the Republic? Your friend, Rondo, once gunned down three bystanders in cold blood so he could escape capture on Narcrita. Cassius felt a pit form in his stomach. He... He did all that? Yeah. And on top of that, he was constantly getting involved in the business of Rota Fall. So let me give you a little advice. Take that list he gave you and throw it in the nearest garbage chute. You'll be better off not involving yourself in his business. Rondo had never told Cassius about any of these things. He knew Rondo was a criminal, but this... He started to question everything he knew about his old friend. Now, I'm gonna send you and your cohorts out the back entrance to our domain. You are to leave. Do not speak of this to anyone, and do not return to Terrace. Is that clear? I'm sorry. But I still need to find those contacts. Kef snorted. Did you not listen to a word I said, Jedi? I heard you. But I'm sticking to this. If what you say is true, then Rondo wasn't who I thought he was all these years. That doesn't change the fact that he was still my friend. Some friend. A liar. A thief. And a murderer. I lied to the Jedi Order for many years. I've lied about who I really am ever since the rise of the Empire. I've stolen Imperial property and used it to sabotage their operations. And I've killed outside of self-defense more than once. So I'd say I'm not better than Rondo, if you want to look at it like that. How exactly do you believe you're helping your case here? But I've also sacrificed a lot in the name of peace. I fought in the Clone Wars, and did my best to defend innocence from the oppression of the Separatists. I helped to stop a tyrant on Bakura. I did my best to look after a young girl like my own, and keep her safe. Make of all of this what you will. But Rondo aided me in times where he had no obligation. And even when he could have made a fortune by turning me over to the Empire, he didn't. Most of all, in his dying days, he made it his goal to spend them looking for me, to return something and deliver a list of people who can help bring an end to the Empire. Whatever things that he may have done, he's no longer around to defend himself. But if what you say is true, then I choose to remember Rondo for who he was. Maybe not a good person through and through, but one of my oldest friends. Kind words for a killer. 
You Jedi are supposed to be defenders of justice, yes? What justice did he receive? Cassius simply looked at Kef. We also believe in forgiveness. For some people, that's harder to do. For some, it's impossible. I'm willing to forgive Rondo. Kef looked closely at Cassius and sighed. If you want to waste your time here, be my guest. Vec, take these two to their comrades and get them out of here. Vec nodded and ushered Cassius and Pip out of the building and over to a series of metal huts. As they walked inside the first one, Cassius saw Gaidom sitting calmly, restraints around his wrist, while Dotami writhed in the corner, enraged at being held captive by two groups of people he hated. Cassius looked to Gaidom. You seem unusually cool. I'm fairly decent at sensing a threat when I see one. Rotafall won't pose a threat to us if we stay out of their way. Vec turned to Gaidom as he hoisted Dotami to his feet. Just remember that last part, Jedi. Vec removed Gaidom's restraints and ushered them out of the shack. We still have to find those contacts. Let's head to the surface and figure out our next move. Gaidom nodded and hauled Dotami along by his shoulder. This way. The group followed Vec up the steps and around narrow tunnels until they reached a metal hatch. Head out this way. Not a word to anyone. Our lips are sealed. Stepping out through the hatch, Cassius and Gaidom looked around. There was no sign of any Imperials or civilians. I'm going to contact the Arabella. Cassius pulled out his comlink and activated it. Vendel, do you copy? No sign of who we're looking for yet, but we're going to keep looking. What's your status? Vendel? Vendel, do you copy? Cassius looked at Gaidom with concern. Try to reach the Arabella's comm channel. Cassius entered a code into the comm link, hoping to get a response. Nothing. It's offline. Gaidom reached to his comm link to contact the shuttle they arrived in. Shuttle C-19, respond. I repeat, shuttle C-19, respond. Nothing. No one is answering. They can't be jamming our signals, can they? Cassius was about to respond before he pulled Gaidom and Pip into the shadows along with Dotami. The distinct sounds of transport ships rang out overhead. Peeking out, Cassius saw two large Imperial crafts hauling two impounded ships behind them. Their shuttle and the Arabella. They were headed for a Star Destroyer in orbit.